Welcome to Paris, a state of mind. Join us as we talk about the good, the bad, the ins, the outs of property rentals and purchases in and around Paris. We'll have topics for renters, owners, and visitors, share questions we are regularly asked, and more. My name is Gail Boisclair of Perfectly Paris, and my co host is Marie Pistinier of Lokim Paris. Be a part of it. Both of us are proud members of the SPLM, the first representative. Body of Furnished Rental Professionals. Hey, Marie. Well, we're back in the studio again, or back in the saddle. Ha ha. Hi, Gail. How are you? I'm very fine. And you, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. The sunny weather is in Paris, but it's still kind of crisp. You know, you can't run out in uh, bare legs at the moment. It's still too cool for that. But oh, well, could be worse. At least it's not raining. (laughs) Yeah. Lucky we are. Well, yes. And I guess today, uh, we've talked so much in the past about renters and so on. I think today we should really focus on owners. What do you think? Yes, uh, very good uh, and large topic. We have many aspects that we can talk about for owners. Well, maybe today we can just like focus on things that they should do, like not talk about the purchase process. We can do that in another episode. Right now, we'll just talk about somebody who has already purchased their apartment and what the heck do they do with it? That's a very good topic. All right. (laughs) Well, let's go there. And why, though, I guess the first question is, why should an owner choose renting their apartment furnished versus unfurnished? So there is um, several reasons why an owner can choose uh, that. The the first thing would be to to have something convenient. For example, if you want to use it yourself, it's it's much better to have some furniture in your apartment than to come and uh, to have a to have an, uh, an unfurnished place. So this is one of the things. Another topic would be, the, another s- subject would be the fiscal uh, matters and, uh, and perks. And I think we can talk a little in details a little uh, later, but uh, there is uh, a, um, some extra interest in the furnished um, taxation. And of course, for the length of stay, when you do a, um, a furnished, uh, an unfurnished uh, rental, you are going to commit for three years. It doesn't mean that the, the tenant will absolutely stay for three years, but there is all the, um, uh, like, for example, the notice that you can give to a tenant will be every three years. When you rent for a furnished apartment, it's only every year. So it gives you a little more flexibility on the, um, on, on the way you can get back your apartment, either it's for you or to sell it. And that's it, I think. And actually, just a, a question about the three-year lease for an unfurnished apartment. Is there any way that an owner can actually give their um, tenant notice if they want to break the lease before three months? Uh, Sorry, three years? Uh, No, they have to wait. It it is six months before the anniversary of the lease, but the anniversary is every three years. So it's it's a bit long. So really, okay. if you want to be like uh, able to um, to have some, uh, I don't know, if you want, if you need to to sell it, for example, and you need quick cash, it can be inconvenient. After you can always sell it with the tenant inside, but the um, the, the money you can uh, you can ask for it will be a little lower. You will have a little uh, decrease on the price because you rent it with a tenant inside. That means that the the buyer will buy it with an actual uh, contract on it. Mm-hmm. So and the next per, the buyer will have all the will have to take the the lease the way it is mm-hmm. you cannot move it you cannot change it well there, there there's already many good reasons now of why to go for a furnished rental and so legally what is a furnished rental does that mean it's got an air mattress and a fridge and nothing else uh, sometimes it uh, it used to be that that, that way back then no. I, <laughs> Except uh, no. S- some people were really, uh, some owners were really like uh, doing the basic, like a table, chair, and uh, a w- something to cook, a fridge, and a and a bed. Since a few years, we have a, an official list finally uh, that I'm sure that you can put, uh, we can put on in the note of the podcast, uh, which says exactly everything that should be inside. So of course, all the the bed, the table, chairs, a couch. Uh, a couch if it's not a sofa bed when you, when you are renting a studio. Uh, there is also some um, something that is uh, you have to have shutters or uh, to have a curtain that can uh, block the, the light from coming uh, coming in. 
uh, or little thing like uh, uh, you have to have a freezer in the in the in the fridge or outside, but you have to have one. Even though in tiny studios you are usually used to like little fridge and you are very happy to have it and you don't want to have like an additional freezer who, which is going to take some space. And of course, um, depending as you are a professional uh, property management and as, as I am, we, we usually don't stop at the um, official list. We always ask for more things like, the, of course, the linen, the towels, uh, internet can be an, uh, uh, an additional thing. So TV can be uh, like something that can be mandatory for some tenants. Well, I think we've got, in some cases, yeah, we do over the top in our businesses, yours and mine, most certainly to make sure it's furnished, but sometimes it's over the top. Like those owners, sorry to say if you're listening to us, but you don't need 1,000 books in your library when you're renting out your apartment it's a little too much yeah and you don't you don't you especially don't need to leave all your paper your official paper like a tax tax of your on your incomes or like uh, any taxation on the apartment or personal letters you really have to when you rent out your apartment you have to think about the people who are going to to be there even though they are staying if if you rent on a like a vacation rental uh, type of rental People don't want to to be around your own uh, your personal belongings, like at least the minimum, but not all the belongings. Like uh, <laughs> like the underwears are not mandatory and uh, with a, with an easy access. It's like it's good <laughs> even like it's too, it's like um it sounds stupid, but like the shoes, you, you leave yeah. your shoes inside and usually take some space. And uh, but this is taking too much. And for a tenant who arrive with the yeah, even if it's for a week. And especially if it's like for a few months or a year, you don't want to 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 have things that are really personal. But I usually tell my owners that if they do have things like personal stuff that they want to leave in the apartment, they should have either a locked co- closet or if they have a cellar, a cave, a dungeon, <laughs> uh, some place to lock up their stuff, then they should just put their personal stuff that they want to keep all the time there, so it's out of people's way to give give people the. F- space that they would like in uh, the apartment they're renting another thing that i'm seeing uh, as well to my owners are usually that when you see your apartment you have to see it with the uh, fresh eyes and you have to think about okay if something is missing if something is broken is it going to break my heart or not and i'm not talking about financial uh, issue but because of course when you rent out your apartment, we rent an apart- apartment which can be from studios to five-bedroom apartment, which can be from basic to very high-end apartment. Uh, and I'm not talking about having a Picasso on the wall. I'm talking about, okay, this is something that comes from my grandma. And if it's broken, I will be heartbreaking broken. So it's really, you have to, to consider that it has to be convenient, to be warm. You don't want to, to live like the <laughs> if it's too creepy, it's not going to, um, to 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 work, especially when you have a lot of apartments on the on the market. But you really have to consider: okay, is it is the value um, sentimentally or uh, financially important? Then I don't leave it inside. Yeah. Tenants are not are not they are not breaking uh, like a no plate uh, uh, on purpose. But if it happens, we cannot blame them for being a bit uh, how do we say maladroit. Yeah. Clumsy. Clumsy. <laughs> Clumsy. Yeah. No, I know. And I, I do. That's another thing that I always say as well is to never leave something that's of sentimental value that you would feel sad if it wasn't there anymore. Even if it's like you say, something, something totally irrelevant, the mug that you got, um, I don't know, from uh, your grandmother or when you were visiting her in, I don't know, in Alsace and uh, who knows what, something silly like that, and then it's broken. But yeah, any any sentimental stuff should go. So I guess like we're going to give them a list in the show notes of what's really legally required for a furnished rental. Are there other things that they should consider to keep in mind when setting up the apartment? You have to, to think about what would you do yourself when you um, check in an apartment and you need to be there for one month, three months, or a year. Like uh, for uh, less than a year, uh, internet would be mandatory, especially when you don't speak the language, when you 
we are when you are dealing with international clients, they are not going to call the provider and subscribe themselves and unsubscribe themselves like three months after. So we really have to convenience things inside. Same for the TV or cable and and, um, and everything. If it's for more than a year, then of course this is uh, we can discuss that because a tenant will pay the, the electricity under his name, for example, or will pay the, the internet on, under his name. But when even for electricity, when it's a short stay, like you have a six months expatriate people who come in, Okay, he's not going to to the same to 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 get a subscription a subscription from EDF. The, it's convenient to uh, check the meters, and at the end of the stay, you are going to charge him according to what he actually used. But uh, you are not going to ask him to take all the to do all the paperwork for only a six months lease. Yeah, I agree with that. And you in your apartment, do you have other things that you? You suggest your owners to to get like in the linen or in the like the, the number of sets we can have and um... yeah yeah I always try to make sure that they have a certain amount of uh, like make sure that the for example kitchen it's very important I feel to have the kitchen properly set up with all the cutlery silverware etc to accommodate the amount of people they say that can stay in an apartment so if it's like an apartment for four people and they've only got four plates that's not quite enough they should have at least have eight you know or or more so sometimes the bare minimum is just too bare they should really think as you say if they were living in the place themselves what would they need do they need a wine opener of course we're in France we need like yeah. 10 wine openers. Well, maybe not 10, but maybe more than one in case one gets broken. And do we need a cheese board? Cheese board. We need, of course. We need a cheese board. <laughs> and sharp knives. We'll be right back with Paris, a state of mind, after a word from our sponsors. Welcome to Paris Underground Radio's The Heart of You. My name is Annette Delu. This is a podcast about soul exploration, finding out what your true purpose is in this lifetime through various modalities such as grounding and energy clearing, divination, and exploring your past lives. Over the next 20 episodes, I will also be interviewing experts in the fields of astrology, mediumship, as well as numerology. Join us every Thursday for a brand new episode Go to parisundergroundradio.com for more information. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Paris Underground Radio on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I look forward to walking this journey with you. And now back to Paris, a state of mind. And one of the things that... If, if, you, if the apartment or the property you, you purchase in Paris and you put on the market is not your uh, primary home, for example, you, have, you are living elsewhere, don't bring up in your apartment all the old stuff you don't want in your, in your home. Because it, we have said too much like the old, um, how do you say, poil and uh, all the casseroles and everything that are old things that, you, that come from another life, in fact. It's, uh, yeah. or even for the linen. You just you bring you are you are not forced to put high hand linen with like Egyptian uh, string and everything. Okay, you are not forced to, to go on these expenses. But okay, take the average. It's got to be reasonable. Yes, and take some uh, and not the cheap one, and uh, take some white things that can be uh, really uh, clean quick, quickly and easily. Bleach. Bleach exactly. Eau de, Eau de Javel. Yeah. my friend. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and don't, and uh, vinaigre <laughs> vinaigre blanc and. Really, don't bring up the old linens that you got that are okay, even if there is a little hole in, in the in the right corner. But no, you don't yeah. bring that. You put that no. away. You keep it for you for, for you if it's okay for you. But when you rent it, this is um this is really the way to avoid to have bad comments from from the tenant. And we don't want to hear bad comments from from a tenant. <laughs> Well, and I also feel another way to look at it, too, is that if um, a renter arrives in an apartment and it's in nice shape and the quality of their things are nice, as you say, it doesn't have to be super high end, but good quality stuff, and they see that the owner has taken care of their apartment with what they've put into it and how they've decorated and so on, then the renter has a higher chance of taking great care of that apartment as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, they'll, they'll see that the owner respects the space, and in turn, the renter will probably respect the space as well. 
So like, apart from all of that, um, when it comes time for the owners to try to figure out how to calculate their rental rate, are there certain charges that they should keep in mind when they're, when they're setting their, their rental rates? Yes, you do have, uh, as an owner, you are going to be um, to pay uh, by trimester the building utilities. These building utilities are, uh, include everything that, the, that you owe to the building according to the size of your apartment. And uh, usually you have a rent, and then on top you add uh, the building utilities. But you have to add the building utilities that are what we call the charge récupérable, the um, collectible charges, you would say. Yeah, like that. yeah, that sounds good. Or the charge locative, because those are the charges that you can actually really, the utilities that, that you can actually add to the to the rent. For example, you are going to to do the roof of the of the of the building. The tenant will not pay for that, but the tenant will pay for the the, the cleaning of the the common area for a portion of the payment of the superintendent if there is one for the the elevator usage, for example. But not everything. So you cannot just split the building charges that are called every trimester in three. You really have to look for the collectible recup- recuperable. Yeah. <laughs> the- yeah. Basically the. Like the stuff related to the common areas of the apartment that everybody uses versus like structural for the building itself. So, and this, you have a, a, a recap on the yearly charges um, summary. So it's easy to get. And from, from a, a year to another, it doesn't change much. And this is a super important because if you don't put the right amount, if you put too much, then you you may be able to reimburse the tenant for the past payment, and the rent will also be lower to be according to the exact amount. So it's it's very important to have a a, a close amount uh, that that we put on the rent. On top of that, you will have, of course, and as an owner, the tax foncier, and on this tax, that's like a tax when you own the apartment, right? Tax foncier. Yeah, the, the fact that you own a primary home or secondary home. And you have to know that, for example, in Paris, the tax foncier, um, I, I don't know, I, I have a, a little uh, blank. I'm not sure that it's, if it's a tax foncier or the tax d'habitation. But when it's a secondary home, you own sec- a secondary home, you may be overtaxed. I think it's the tax d'habitation. That's the, yeah, it's the tax d'habitation that is through the roof when it's a secondary home. Thanks, Mayor of Paris. Did I say that? Yes, I did. <laughs> don't Oops. don't give name. <laughs> don't, don't give any name. And so so and on your tax foncier, there is one important topic, which is a, a tax on the garbage uh, collection. So this is a tax when you have a tenant for like a yearly lease that is renewable, you can actually get this amount. Uh, you can charge him for this amount. It may be something between a hundred and two hundred euros, something like that. Uh, and so if you do have, uh, you can ask yourself if you work directly with the tenant, you can uh, send him the details. And so the tenant has to pay for that. Or you send it to your property manager who will take care of, uh, of getting it. Uh, and this is something, something that uh, often owners are missing. They are just, they don't think about that. Yeah. For me, I never think about that either. And which tax bill is that listed on? It's on the tax foncier. It's in, in fact, it's on the second side. The the other side. Yeah. Very sneaky. And uh, the last but not least, uh, the the tricky tax d'habitation, which is a tax for living in the, in the apartment. Uh, It's supposed to be a tax which is lower and lower because the way it's calculated, it's uh, it's based also on the part of your incomes when you are a tenant. And uh, you are charged for that when you live in the apartment on the 1st of January, when you are on the tenant side. That means that when you are the owner, if the apartment is empty on the 1st of January, then you have to pay that on top of your tax foncier and everything. So it's important to know and it's important to see that sometimes we can't, um, it's complicated to apply for that. Like if you have a tenant who live on the 10th of January, it's complicated to, to say, okay, you are there, so you are going to pay the thousand euros of the tax, you are going to pay for that. It's a, a bit tricky because sometimes we have notice uh, before December 31st for people checking out before December 31st. And people don't want to check in on the 1st <laughs> of January. They want to check in on the 2nd or, or on the 3rd. So basically, the owners will have to, 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 to pay for that. 
And to think that I always thought they didn't want to check on January 1st because they were too hungover from December 31st. I thought it was that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the only reason. I th- of course, <laughs> January 1st, a lot of, of uh, agencies are closed because it's a day off in France. It's a hol- bank holiday. But uh, it's also, sometimes we can we say to people, okay, we can make you ch- your checking on the 31st of, of December. No problem. And even we can offer the free night <laughs> from the, the 31st to the 1st of January. But no, it's, it's uh, and it can be quite high and um, and it's complicated. You are not supposed as the owner, you are not supposed to charge the tenant for your own tax habitation, even if you charge it with a prorated price, because the tax habitation do include some part of your incomes, so it's not fair on the um, on the tenant. And I mean, actually, can they even can an owner set any price they want? Imagine that I've got such a fabulous apartment. It's stunning. Uh, I bought all my furniture at super high-end stores and everything. Can I just set any price in the world that I want? Since few years, no, no more. It's, um, <laughs> I mean, it's yes or no, and not. But you have to to be based on the on the no in order to 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 set up your price. In Paris and in some um, large uh, cities in France, uh, we are uh, what we call on a rent controlled. That means that there is a price per square meter. So there is an average price and what they say uh, uh, a price majoré. So it's like a, in, I don't know how would you say that. It's a little increase, like a yeah, it's uh, a surplus on, on the square meter. It's like um, uh, 20% more than the, the average price. And this is a price per square meter, uh, which is without the building utilities, even the tenant. And it's uh, you, there is a website where you can check that. And it's going to be for every, um, it depends on the building, which is weird, like uh, the year the building has been constructed. If, it's, if the rent is furnished or unfurnished, the number of room, uh, meaning like, for example, a studio is one room and uh, a one bedroom apartment is a two room um, apartment. We have a different way to, to, to name the type of apartment. And uh, depending on that, then you will have, you put the exact address and you will have a price per square meters, which can be weirdly enough. You can, it can be the different from a building to the building next door. It's Really weird, but it's you crazy. Can, yeah. yeah. So, but once you have that, uh, you have to add the building utilities. You have to eventually add the internet if you have an internet package or something like that. And um, and there is a way to add what we say a complement loyer, which is the law is a bit um, blurry, which can be good sometimes. It says that if you have some special perks, which can be the area, the view a balcony, a terrace, a specific thing inside the apartment, and there is three dots. So I don't know how you say that in a, in a, in English. Three dots? Like the dot, 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 you know, etc. Yeah, etc. yeah. <laughs> so it, it means that this is a list which is not uh, exhaustive, like with all the topics that can be. So that means that, for example, putting a washing machine in an apartment is not mandatory. It's not on the list of the of the final uh, the final list of the what you have to have in the furnished apartment. Having internet is not in the in the list. Uh, having a, a, a dishwasher or a dryer, for example, it's not things that are included. So you can consider that you can have some complement, some uh, some additional thing that can justify the fact that your price is higher than the rent control price, and this has to be to be checked and uh, detailed in the. Um, in the in the list you are going to sign so it's important when you buy an apartment but we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later but when you are going to set up the price to have the correct amount because then it can be complicated uh, for example if the tenant the tenant has three months after he checks in to eventually discuss this this additional amount of the rent so it's really important to make sure that it's not an additional amount which is uh, crazy it's important to, to to be fair and reasonable and in the meantime, when you are going to put your apartment on the market through an agent or directly, when you are, if you, if you have 300 euros on top of the rent rent control price, you will not be in the first of the list. So you will definitely be not well ranked. So so it's it's important. It's not only what you want to get and what you want to have and and what is a, a sometimes owners can um, 
it's like uh, it's like their babies. The apartment is their babies. So they say, okay, but it was two thousand euro. Okay, but if it, if the rent control price is a thousand five hundred euros, it will not go through. Especially when it's uh, as uh, as today a market where there is more tenants, uh, there is more apartments than tenants. Well, what I'll do for our listeners is I'll put a link in the show notes for um, the website where they can check the price out. It's called the Loyer de Référence, referenced rent, I guess, in English. Anyway, we'll put that in the show notes. We'll be right back with Paris, a state of mind, after a word from our sponsors. Hey, I'm Emily. And I'm Caroline. And we live in France, where pretty much every meal demands both a cheese course and a wine pairing. Amen. It doesn't need to be a special occasion for you to add this French flair to your daily meals, and we want to help you with that. That's the thing. A great cheese and a delicious glass of wine can really elevate your at-home dining, however, even if it's a Tuesday night and you're by yourself. Tuesday night by yourself is the perfect time. Absolutely. <laughs> So get involved. Send us your favorite home meals. Describe the recipe. Let us know what it's all about. And we will put our palates and minds to the test. I'm going to pair it with the most complimentary cheese. And I am going to figure out a perfect wine pairing. Tune in on Fridays to hear some of our favorite pairings and to discover some brand new recipes that you can try at home. Join our guests as we explore how to elevate your home cooked food. Can't wait to share these with you. Bon appétit. And now back to Paris, a state of mind. Should we talk about the length of stay that they should consider and the different types of rental contracts? Yes, I will I will make it short and maybe we'll do another episode on the type of lease so we can go a little deeper in the topics. Sure. You can actually when you rent your apartment, you can do uh, whatever you want in the in the beginning. After you have to read the law and the Parisian law in particular for those who are uh, who are in Paris. So you can do vacation rental. You can do long term lease, which are like it become the apartment become the primary home of the the tenant. You can do by mobility mobility lease, which is a in between contract between one month to ten months, but it has to be done to certain type of tenants especially those who are in between contracts or with like a trial uh, time in their contract and things like that. We can go a little deeper later on that. And you have also what we can call the, uh, what is a bicot civil, which can include like um, mid-term, uh, like medium stays and also corporate lease. Uh, when you sign a lease with a, with a company and they have a tenant, one of their employees is going to be the tenant, uh, then you will be under what we call a bicot civil, which is not the primary home, it's more like around the secondary home type of uh, of lease. But we'll deep, we'll go a little deeper in, on that later, maybe. I think actually our next episode, instead of being about uh, purchasing uh, for the owner, I think we should get into all the different leases because I think a lot of people are very confused and lost about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's a whole episode in itself. <laughs> Why is that? Because the French love paperwork. That's what yes. you taught me, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so would you go to, to the last, uh, probably the last portion of the, um, of the thing that we, we talked about a little about it uh, in, the, in the beginning, but uh, one of the things that is important, but maybe we'll do another episode and it would be like an additional one, would be all the fiscal and the tax uh, question when you do furnished versus unfurnished. When you do furnished apartment, I will make it short, uh, there is a lot of advantage. And for example, the first one is that you can declare the, your incomes in two ways. The, the usual ways is like for, uh, forfeit, forfeit, I mean to say. Yeah. You gain a thousand euros uh, of rent, you will be taxed on the on 500 euros. So it's a 50% uh, rebate, <laughs> I would say. Maybe it's not the, 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 the accounting term, but... Um, there is another way to do that, which is called the real, which means like déclaration réel. It means that you will say, okay, I got a uh, thousand euros, but I have a loan uh, with this percent of interest on my credit. I did some renovations, so I, I, I spent this amount of money. I do work with a, a real estate agent, so I had agency fees and flat management fees and everything. And so you deduct it all the way through. 
And if it goes above the five, uh, the fifty percent, then you can really deduct a lot of um, a, a lot of money uh, on the um, on your income on the taxation on your income of your incomes. And the the funny thing is that, I mean, the funny thing is the cherry on the cake, as we say, that to do that, of course, you have to contact your 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 agent or service company who is going to lead you to companies who are going to help you through that. You can do that on yourself, but on your own. But I would not personally use a professional. Yeah. Use a professional. <laughs> exactly. Personally, I will not go that there. And um, when you use this kind of, uh, so it's it's uh, an accountant who is going to to be specialized in this type of declaration. It will cost you something, but most of the of the cost of the accountant will be also tax deductible. So that means that really, if you if you have a loan on your own on this, you are going to. And if you have done some expenses, and if you pay, pass through a company to do to do your management, you probably will uh, will go uh, close to zero on your on your taxation. So it's very interesting, and you have to to really respect the first time you are going to declare your incomes and to say, okay, I want to go on this type of uh, declaration to get your um, to get some some yeah some rebates, some discount, or, or at least some bang for your buck. That's what we say in English: more bang for your buck. <laughs> okay. Well, that was great. That's it. So, uh, did you did you learn a lot <laughs> again oh, today, Gail? <laughs> well, I learned that we've got so much to cover that we can't even do it in one episode. I definitely learned that, and I learned that there really you really do have to figure out the advantages and the disadvantages, um, furnished and unfurnished. And I definitely see many more advantages to renting out an apartment that is furnished if you are the owner than to rent it out unfurnished for various reasons. And yeah, make sure that you entice, maybe you should send renters, maybe the owner should send their renters a bottle of champagne to just stay in the apartment for January the 1st. So then they can pay the tax debitation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's also good. I also learned about the rental rates that we just can't uh, say, hey, that's going to be 5,000 euro. But the apartment uh, across the hall rents for 1,500. <laughs> exactly. So, so I definitely learned a lot of things and we'll put some information that's useful to the people in the show notes. And we'll have two follow-up episodes to this one, not one, but two. Hey, two for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Marie. This has been a great call. Yeah, thank you very much, Kate. It was really, really as usual, always uh, fun and, uh, and interesting to, to exchange on those topics. Well, until the next time. Au revoir. À bientôt. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Paris, a state of mind featuring Gail of Perfectly Paris and Marie of Lokim, both who are founding members of the SPLM. Paris, a state of mind is produced by Paris Underground Radio. The music Jazz in Paris is by Media Right Productions. For more information on this show and others, go to parisundergroundradio.com.